Good evening, this is Tokyo Woodblock printmaker Dave Bow here in our Asakusa shop on a very hot and sweaty summer evening. So, what's the video going to be this time? Should I show you a run through of a printing session, like in the previous video of that heron and iris? What about showing you some of the old prints here in the shop, showing you why I find them beautiful? Or maybe should it be another one of those rambling stories about some aspect of my work? Today, it's going to be none of those things. This is the first in what I'm planning to be a three-part series, and I'm going to bring you along as I make a couple of woodblock prints start to finish. I'll be doing the carving myself on this one, and I'll also be doing the proof printing, so it's a perfect opportunity for me to schedule this video shooting. I don't need to keep running upstairs to try and catch Aimi-san during each color. Now, what will the print be? It's not the octopus, that's still going to be quite a ways away yet. Some years back, just when the Ukiyo-e Hero series was getting started, Jed and I came up with the idea of making what we called the Chibi Heroes, a series of small scale but beautifully produced and very much fun little designs. Now these are still in production with our printers pulling more of them each month as required by the orders that come in. But some of you may remember that a few months back when I initiated the Patreon project, I described one of the rewards that we promised to send to backers. Here's a little video replay of what I said back then. We call this level Chibi Patron because the rewards are handmade woodblock prints of the same format that we've made for famous with our Chibi Hero series. Now I don't have one of the new ones to show you yet because we're just now starting the production of the first ones, but the designs will have a similar look and feel to our previous Chibi Heroes prints. Although, please note that the theme of the new ones we'll be making for this won't be connected to video game characters like these we'll be doing something original for our Patreon chibis. So that's what this particular group of videos will be about. The Patreon campaign has been up and running for a few months now, and I have got to get busy getting those first pair of Patreon chibis into production. Now, as many of you know, I myself am not any kind of an artist. My skills lie in other directions. So where do I get the designs? A few weeks ago, just when I was starting to get this going, a printmaker friend of mine, John Amos, from Georgia in the US, was spending some time here as a kind of guest worker upstairs. We gave him workbench space there, and he spent the days working on his own projects, trying to learn as much as he could from our experienced printers. Our girls had a lot of fun talking and working with him, and it was a very enjoyable time for them all. Now, he's currently working in academia, but many years ago he was a professional illustrator. So it was a no-brainer to ask him to work on this project, and he agreed to have a go at it. The two and I passed a few sketches and ideas back and forth, although it really didn't need much of any input from me, as he's very capable of this type of job. At some point last week, we called it done, and he sent me line work in the form of a high-resolution Photoshop file. Now, I've promised the Patreon backers two of these prints each year, one to be delivered in the summer very soon now, and the second in the coming winter. But it's much easier at the production stage if we make them in what we call two-up form, with both prints on one sheet of paper. So that's what I've got here. This is John's line work, taken from the digital files, and printed out by me on a special kind of paper that we make ourselves. Perhaps you can see, it's actually, if I can get it apart here, here we go. It's actually two layers. The top one is an extremely thin Japanese washi, and this is laminated to a normal copy paper using a low-tack spray adhesive. We do it this way because the thin stuff won't go through a laser printer by itself. That's the computer end of it, but once that's out of the way, we're now going to drop back in time a couple of hundred years. And from here on, right to the end of the production process, it's going to be done just the same way that it was back hundreds of years ago. With the design now ready, it's time for me to get back to work. The first step will be pasting this onto the wood, and I can get carving. That happens in my room back there. Let's have a look. People are always asking questions in the comments about how we make this paper, our transfer paper. It's a very thin Japanese paper called Gampi, Gampi Shi. And I'm using a low-tack spray adhesive to connect it with just some normal copy paper. And now it'll run through a copy machine with no problem. I'm making two sheets here. For the past couple of years now, we've been making our own wood blocks with cherry wood we source from the lumber markets here. And what I'm doing is here, and looking through these, uh, the first two I picked out were light and soft for color blocks. That third one, that looks good and hard. That's the one I'm going to choose for the key block.
The first step in getting any block ready is to cut the registration marks. There will be an L mark at my right hand side and a single line at my left hand side. This is now the L part of the L mark. And pasting down the tracing. Uh, the first step, I have just moistened the wood surface a bit. It's quite dry, and if I don't do this, the glue just uh, dries up too quickly. Here we go. With the wood now a bit moistened, this is the glue. It's a kind of mucilage, like the kind they use in school. Smear it on, spread it round, and then sort of rough up the surface a bit so the paper doesn't stick quite too quickly to any given part of it. It's important when peeling this off not to pull that up vertically or it tends to peel the gumpy paper off the wood. Try and keep the pulling to a horizontal direction. And then while the paper is still wet, very, very carefully peel away from the back. A tiny bit too much pressure and you'll slide that paper on the surface and the image will be distorted. This is the final one of the three stones we use for sharpening. I use about a 400 grit if the knife is broken, a 1000 or 1200 grit for normal touch-ups, and then this very fine stone for just final, uh, final dressing. The mud there is from the Nagara stone, and it's the mud that's really doing the sharpening. The stone itself is so hard. Here's the back side of the blade now. I think when I did this, I stood the blade up on end. Let's see what happens next here. Yeah, here we go. The blade is standing up now, just at a slight angle, just to put a tiny bit of bevel on the back of that thing to help it from breaking too quickly. And here we go.
Carving a key block like this goes in three stages and what you've seen here for the past couple of minutes is stage one. It's all with the knife, the blade, and what you've seen me doing here is outlining all the edges of the lines. Well, some are solid like this leaf, but a moment ago you saw me cutting lines. This is stage one. Go for the whole thing, cutting each line. In stage two we'll see in the next clip where we get the larger tools and clear away the waste wood. I mentioned three stages and this is part of that second stage where the larger tools clear away as much as possible of all the waste wood surrounding the areas that need to be kept. There's a series of gouges for this, some quite narrow like this one and some quite wide for the wider areas. And once that's done, stage three comes next. This final stage is done with a series of chisels called ice ski. I think they're sort of bullnose chisels in English. They're, they're basically flat with slightly rounded corners. And I've got a whole series of them from about half a millimeter up to about 15 millimeters wide. And I just pick the one that fits each particular shape and size that's necessary. Smoothing off the bottom of the areas and working up to those lines that were cut with the first knife. And this should do it for the key block. So there we have it. The key block now is well underway. And if I can keep up the same pace, it should be ready in the next couple of days. The next step will be to transfer the sabage onto some blank blocks, cut some color blocks, and the next video, which shouldn't be too long now, will show that process. Thanks very much for watching. And uh, of course, before I close off, I have to say a very special thanks to those of you who have joined that Patreon campaign. That support has already made a huge difference here, as we have taken on now three new staff members. Two to help here in the shop, helping me get away from this place, and one is a kind of administration manager. I am really, really now getting back to work at my bench. Good night for now. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you again quite soon.